I think we do have a responsibility to help um, advance technologies um, outside motorsport. I think we tend to do that by default really because we are we're always looking to improve the efficiency of all the devices on the car, be they gearboxes, engines, cooling systems, the aerodynamics and those improvements do read across to modern road cars. For designing car, aerodynamics is all, always a very important factor. We have to live together with aerodynamics. So aesthetically, it has to be very nice, but we have to respect aerodynamics. Our science is not very visible. We're dealing with air, and it's the science of fluid dynamics and how the air interacts with car surfaces to produce downforce, which is what we're trying to achieve with our sport. Today, in the modern days, how you can balance the aerodynamics and the beautiful shape. But this is not a contradictory, because sometimes we can get inspiration from aerodynamics. The Formula One car is really the perfection of aerodynamics. But at the same time, it's beautiful. Aerodynamics at the moment is the key performance differentiator between cars. We've got, as it currently stands, an engine freeze in Formula One. So your ability to develop the engine is fairly limited. And aerodynamics is um, very powerful in terms of making the car quicker. A 10% improvement in aerodynamics performance will increase uh, the car's performance by one second a lap. So it's pretty significant. Well, new for this year has been the introduction of DRS, which is uh, quite simply stands for Drag Reduction System. If you imagine if that was the, the sort of angle of the wing passing through the wind, if you open it out, then obviously it reduces the amount of drag. You know, a bit like having your hand out of a window of a car. If you have it that way, it's quite difficult to hold it. If you do that, of course, there's less resistance. So it just reduces the drag on the rear wing and enables the car to travel more quickly down the straight. Certainly Montreal and Spa have been pleasant surprises this year. We've tried to develop the car aerodynamically to be better suited to those tracks. Monza in particular, it's, it's the highest speed circuit of the year. It's characterised by long straights with reasonably slow corners. So there's a lot of emphasis on designing a car which is aerodynamically slippery. We want the car to cut through the air as cleanly as possible. In that situation, we run nice shallow wings, uh, which reduces the downforce, but that's not a big deal because there aren't too many corners for us to push the car onto the track. But what's interesting, uh, when we run Monza Wing, uh, the Monza Wing package, obviously the, the profile of the wing is much, much smaller. So the effect of DRS might not be as, as, as powerful as a, as, a, as, a, as a high downforce wing. So the, um, the discrepancy in speed between um, the two wing levels um, might be uh, a little bit less, but that might force you to run more downforce because you might have the DRS obviously in qualifying, but not as much in the race. So far we had good races with a lot of overtaking and the DRS helped, obviously, the, the overtaking manoeuvres. Similar here, we have a long straight line. Traditionally, it has been difficult to pass, I think, with the DRS device, so opening the rear wing could help, um, but surely we need to watch out not to make it too easy. I think, you know, in 2011, in the remaining races, the one special one that we'd really like to win is, is Monza. It's a race that historically hasn't suited the car, hasn't suited the technicalities of you know of our package so if we could be quick in Monza then that would be something that would be tremendously rewarding. Common between us is passion for design, passion for cars. Designing a Formula One car and winning the race is uh, no compromise. To set a goal, achieve the goal. For us, same thing. <laughs>